Let's kick it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to part 2 of what's new in Windows Whistler 2257. If you haven't seen part 1 I'm sure there's a link to it somewhere up above, to the left, to the right or underneath the video or maybe even over here. Damn, missed it. Anyway, on with the show. One of the more useful parts of XP was first introduced in this build and that is the compatibility thing. You know, when you right click on an exit and you can click the compatibility tab and click and select what operating system you want it to run in compatibility with. Well, that's sort of nascent in this build. And um, what we're looking for, uh, it's controlled by these DLLs here, Shim Eng, or Eng, I suppose. And that's the Shim Engine DLL. If you look at the description, no, that one, that one. It's the Shim Engine DLL which deals with the IAT, and that's the import address table, which is how executables find functions in Windows. And there's another one. It's underneath that shim eng v and this one is the shim engine dll which deals with veh and veh is something that was introduced in build 2211 i think or 2202 and that stands for vectored exception handler so when programs like sort of crash that will find them and probably fix them up so they can keep running and yeah unfortunately though the only program which deals with that so far is SOLIDWORKS 99 plus. Now I've no idea well I have an idea why is because I've searched for it. It's a CAD program. But yeah that's the only one only support there is in this build is for that program. So it must not have liked what they were doing with Windows up till this point and gone, whoa, I don't run on this version of Windows. So Microsoft made a shim for it. Now this sysmain SDB that contains all of the compatibility information for other, I, don't, I presume that's for other programs which don't need separate shims but I can't open this database because it's not in the same format as the final XP ones are and the tools which work on final XP to show you all the lists of the database don't work with this one so I can't actually show you what's in it and what is patched but yeah, that's the first build which introduces Shim Engine, which handles the compatibility stuff. Now after what seems like actually years since the UI for it was introduced, this build is the first to actually have working, when I get to it, working image burning, or rather CD burning, because the exit that actually controls the burning is now in the OS. Now as you can see from the file version here, it's not it doesn't follow the Microsoft version in so because it doesn't have the, the build in it. Which most of the other Windows components do. And you can't tell it from there, but if we go to the corresponding driver and I open up the same for that, we can see that this was actually made by Adaptech and not Microsoft. Now I don't know whether Microsoft licensed some code that Adaptic already had or whether they contracted Adaptic to make it specifically and there was delays in it so maybe that's what well I don't know there was delays in it but maybe there were delays in it which is why it didn't come in the same time as the UI for the feature came in. Now it's a bit fiddly to use and it doesn't work on every CD burner everywhere and we can actually if I go to properties you can see this recording tab is still here and you can enable this via the UI because it's now there by default, sorry that's what I meant to say. If we go to the registry though we can see that even if you copy things to it you probably wouldn't, well obviously you wouldn't anyway because it's only a read only drive that VirtualBox presents, but even if it was a write, uh, CD writer drive it probably still wouldn't work because under one of these keys when I find it, it's iMappy, there's a list of all the recorders that it supports. Now these have various parameters about how they're supposed to be used. I don't know what they mean, but they're mostly different, even for things from the same manufacturer. 
So yeah, I don't know what, what that's about, but so even if you copied stuff to the drive, which I already have, and you tried right into it, nothing would happen because it's not on the list of recorders. But if you then add virtual boxes um, CD-ROM to that, I think that's what it's called. That'll do. So if we do that, then restart Explorer. Hopefully now. Open it and write to it and no. And by the magic of video cutting, we arrive at the day after with no progress being made. Because it's still not working. Before I had to reinstall this because I was I installed something I was working on unrelated to this project and it hosed up Windows so I had to reinstall 2257 and before I reinstalled it, it was actually working when you click right to CD it brought up a progress dialog up here somewhere it didn't work obviously because VirtualBox still doesn't support um, a CD writer drive so it didn't actually work but it brought up a dialog and it said unable to burn things but what there is, you, there's a dialog that you can see if you try and close it it says I show you want to clear the contents of the staging area and the staging area is no longer named after the CD label as it was in previous builds and also, if you try and eject the CD, well, you've got files waiting to be written, it gives you this dialog. Do you want to save the files to the CD? And obviously, write discard cancel. Write still doesn't work, so. So, yeah, unfortunately, I can't show you the dialog working because it. For some reason, it's not working. I don't know why I've got the registry entries set up and everything like that. So, yeah. I'll see if it works when I install 2267, and if it is, I will show it to you then. Because 2267 is a bit lean on new features. But either way, that's CD burning, which you can theoretically do in this build, but I can't. One thing that's not entirely new about this build, but finally all comes together in this build, is Volume Shadow Services. Now, what's that? Well, when you go to right click on a file, any file, and you've got properties, and then you see a tab called Previous Versions, you click on that, and then it lists the previous versions down here somewhere. Well, that's using Volume Shadow Services. Now, in this build, I mean, components have been arriving for VSS since 22.23 with the driver and the program, and now in this build, we finally got the administrative program for it as well, which is VSS Admin. But what we don't actually have is a working VSS system. Now, I can show you a little program which tries to take a snapshot. You see here, start snapshot, start snapshot, that's another thing I can't say. Returned an ID, so that worked, and add to snapshot set, that worked. But what actually didn't work is do the snapshot. As you can see here, it returns this 8004-2306, which means basically that it failed. And it failed for some unknown reason. What you can do is turn on tracing for VSS so we can see kind of why it failed. And if I actually search for the line which I marked, I can't remember what I wrote in, failing point, that's what I wrote in. And here it is down here. It tried to send, move up a bit, it tried to send an IOCTL on the device for the disk to volsnap.sys and that had, oop, it gone? and that actually returned OX32 and that's a Windows error code which means well I'll tell you what it means because I can use this to help show help message, it's not right is it? it's net help message, that's what I'm looking for that's with OX32 Okay then, 50 is in. And as you can see, that means that request is not supported. Don't mind the network thing, because net's just for the network, but that's the actual message for it. So yeah, I don't know what isn't supported, because I've actually formatted C as NTFS this time, instead of... Oh, don't want to see that. 
I've actually formatted C as NCFS this time, so I don't know why that's not quite working. And all the services are working and everything. The driver's loaded, so I don't know why it's not working. But unfortunately, it isn't working, so I can't really show you that. I'll keep trying for future builds, and when it eventually works, I will show you it working. If you've been paying attention, then the last major new feature of this build shouldn't be too much of a surprise because we've seen it in the folder window and that is System Restore which has been borrowed from Windows ME like so many other things and that's controlled by that Restore folder we saw there and also by the Restore folder in System32 which contains this file list.xml which unsurprisingly contains a list of files to include and exclude now one thing that's a little bit noteworthy about this is if you go down to, right to the bottom in the extensions to include there is this ZF center target. Now for those who don't know that's the extension that Windows uses in compressed folders so that you can send to a compressed folder and it'll create a zip for you. That's the extension for that. But zip support isn't in this build yet and it doesn't appear until 2410 so behind the scenes they must have already been on the well must have been working on it already to get it integrated because they licensed that code from some other company again like they did with the image mastering API the IMAP we saw earlier yeah so system restore anyway I have, there's an API that you can use so you don't actually have to go to into C you can just use VB script and it's in this object here called srclient.systemrestore now if you try and run this as soon as you install it or without doing anything special that will fail because this SR client object isn't registered straight away so what you have to do is run registserver32 and it's srclient.dll and that will make sure that you can actually use this API. Now it has two main features to this API, you can enumerate the the restore points with find first restore point and then find next restore point. And you can also create one with create restore point. Rather unsurprisingly, you have to give it a name and then a type. These are actually documented on MSDN, but they're not really of any consequence to us right now. So again, we run it with C script. We get its res point and it didn't enumerate anything. I don't know why it didn't do that. I used to do that earlier but it doesn't now when I had a bit of a monkey about with it. There are some there to enumerate but it doesn't show you them. And if you use one to create one then it quite happily creates one. But what exactly did it do since we can't get into the folder? Well what you can do to get into the folder is you need to command prompt because that doesn't understand any of Explorer's magic. So you go to C and you need slash a colon then s and h so it'll actually list the system and hidden files and folders and then you get this here still with a big long GUID on the end of it so you go cd and then what you do is double click then right click on that to copy it then right click again to paste it and then you do the same with the end of it then cd to there and if you run Explorer percent CD. Then eventually you get this, which is a directory for restart. But anyway, you can look in here and at what it collects. Now it collects things into these EDB database files, and the rp.log I think tells you what's not no, that's the name of the checkpoint. That's the system checkpoint. I think that's the first one it just does as a base. Oh, change.log. Here's the stuff that's inside it. So that contains the WMI EDB and the trace text file that I was, well a link to the trace text file that I was, that I set up for this, and another link file, and a whole bunch of nothing else. Oop, one search. See, 4 was the one I just created, and you see it's actually saved quite a lot of files including this which is the actual VBS file which we were using to run it so you can see it does actually work 
although there's no UI for it, I don't think, yet. And you can you can delete the restart points, but not via the scripting interface. You have to use the actual C interface, which is in SR. Well, it's SR client as well, the DLL there. But you can delete them from the script interface, as I just said. You have to use the C interface, and that's an any file. I'm just exploring this now. That's a, a similar any file. So yeah, system restore is new in this build, and it actually works, which is well, kind of, it's both surprising and not surprising, isn't it? Because it's from ME, so it's working code in ME, so why wouldn't it work here? And surprising because it's a new component to Windows and they generally don't work properly. One bug I did notice with the CD burning feature is that if you copy things to the CD drive but don't actually write them, and then if you like log off or shut down and the CD drive disappears, when you log back on again then it opens up the window that you were working with, you get this sort of phantom drive which is actually the drive that disappeared and it's got a question mark next to the drive icon and if you go to view the like, disks in my computer it's not there it's not F drive there at all but if you go back to it it's actually still kind of there now this is because all these files still exist in the staging folder as I'm about to show you now we'll go through it but yeah all these files stick around because the system still thinks F is the CD burning folder drive thing. So yeah, it's just a bug with the CD burning there. One little fun oddity I noticed in the exports of a DLL in 2257 is in ES DLL, which is the event system, which is part of Complus. And they changed two of the exports to remove the word frigging, which is kind of, but not really, a low intensity substitute for the F word. Now I don't know why they had it there to start with, maybe the engineer behind this was having a really bad day and he couldn't get it to work, he's going Arr! and eventually he got it to work and he just left the frigging in there but now they've removed it because you can't have words like that even slightly sweary in the exports of Windows because people will find out and then people will not like that. So yeah there's a fun thing there. One last little thing I found in the resources of appwiz.cpl, which is the applicate the install and add remove programs um, control panel entry, is in the support.htm file. If we open that up, uh, we get rid of that eventually. Nope. Off the zealous there. We open up the code of it, and we it's down there at the bottom down here somewhere. Yep, there's a comment about this having to set a timeout because, well, it says we have to sleep because for some reason Trident needs time to figure out the dimensions. Lame, and Trident being the code name for Internet Explorer's rendering engine. So yeah, that's in the previous build, 2250. But if we look at the resource of this version, 2257, we get rid of those. Then we bring this one up as well. We can see the same comment is there, except it's now being censored because the lame has been removed. So yeah, there you go, see there, lame. And it's not now in the current version, so a bit of censorship has gone on. The Microsoft edict probably went out saying don't make fun of our own products in our source code. So they got rid of that. Another quick thing to mention is in the control panel, in this speech option, it's no longer speech 5.0, it's just speech. Then you open it up and you can now actually use text-to-speech. In, in the last one, remember, there was two options to build a vocabulary, so you had to talk into it to train it up, but the buttons were greyed out and you couldn't actually click them. Well, now they've disappeared. They're still in the resources of the um, sapir.cpl, which is what this is, what the file that backs this. So yeah, you can now preview the voice by we don't even have to click in there, sometimes it happens automatically, you can see this button's changed to stop without me even clicking the preview button. 
so it does that when you pretty much click into here and as you can hear not, there's nothing coming out of it so it doesn't actually work the volume is on just to show you it's quite low but it, it is actually on and it doesn't work so yeah it's new for this build but it doesn't work another minor thing is that the remember I showed you the error reporting the ex exception reporting in the last build and I ticked it and it all went into a crash loop with Dr. Watson well it no longer crashes now but it doesn't seem to actually do anything now if you crash a, pro crash a process then Dr. Watson attaches but FHL doesn't bother so I don't know what's wrong with that but even if it did it wouldn't actually send anything to Microsoft because if we go looking in the registry you can get to this by other means because it's a, a policy so you can see it through gpedit, that's the one, gpedit.msc so I need to go to hklm software policies Microsoft Windows system PC health and it's that one and you can see here I it's the dump path is what I set in the exception reporting dialog but the default URL to send it to would be http colon slash slash error slash pful upload server now either that's an internal Microsoft server called error or it's just a placeholder until they figure out somewhere public facing to upload that to but yeah again it's got the lame in it so whoever were, people at Microsoft must really like the name well the word lame because it seems to be in everything isn't it the lame buttons we just seen them they edited out lame in the comments and they got lame error so yeah Microsoft quite like lame another th fun thing that one Microsoft employee spent his time doing was changing something which didn't really need changing if we go to file management and that's the DLL which controls the computer the computer services snapping thing in MM, MMC and we could dialog 340 wherever that is Come on. there it is as you can see this is for publish this share in active directory and the own name was joe at microsoft.com or redmond slash joe well I'm sorry to say joe's time in the spotlight is over and as of this build it's now jeff smith's time to shine so yeah I don't know why that was changed at all I mean there's really no need for that to be changed I don't think anybody called joe was going hey why is my name in this dialogue so yeah just some somebody at Microsoft actually spent time to change that for some reason and just thought I'd share that with you so yeah that's the final thing I have to show you about this build so I will see you later in 2267 uh, the build not the year